Are you one to learn how to use OBS? It's okay. It's okay. We all want to learn how to use it at some point in time if we want to make YouTube videos or live stream. And I understand there's 30 to 40 minute videos out there that just do nothing but give you word vomit and make you question, do I really want to learn how to use OBS? Because it seems like a very advanced program. And while it can be, and if you want to learn all that information, we have a video up here for you to check out. Go ahead, check it out. It might be something that you actually enjoy. But for everybody else that doesn't want to do that and they just want to learn how to just live stream or just record, then stay tuned because we're going to cover the very basics of that. So without further ado, let's roll that intro and then we'll jump over to the computer. Before we go ahead and get started, I want to go ahead and preface this video with letting you know that there are chapters down below. These chapters might be useful for you if you plan on just streaming or plan on just recording. That way you can save some time when trying to get this set up on the fly. So go ahead and check those timestamps out and jump to wherever you think might be useful for you. So let's go ahead and jump into the main part of the video. So we're going to get started first with the streaming settings. And I want to say, if you've never used OBS before, the built-in tool of the auto configuration wizard is going to be your best friend. And the reason it's going to be your best friend is because you don't have to have much knowledge of what you're doing or the hardware that you're using or your internet speed. It's going to figure that out for you for streaming. And it'll do the same for recording. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So to get started, go to the very top of the menu and click tools and then go down and click auto configuration wizard should be the first option in that list. Then since we're going to be optimizing for streaming, we're going to click optimize for streaming, then click next. And then now we're going to go ahead and select our base canvas resolution. So this says specify the video settings you would like to use. Now, Typically, you would use the base canvas resolution that would be the same as your monitor's resolution. Now, there is things called downscaling, and we will talk about that maybe in a future video, or if you want to check out our full OBS guide, we talk about it. But for this case, let's just go ahead and select what we want to stream or record at. So we're going to go with 1080p because that's pretty much the standard. And for the frames per second, if you're doing pretty much talking um, to people just like chatting and stuff like that, 30 frames per second is great. If you plan on playing video games with a lot of movement on screen, I would suggest 60. So if you're not sure your computer can handle it or not, just go ahead and choose either 60 or 30, but prefer the 60 FPS when possible. Or if you prefer to go with 60 or 30, depending on what you can handle, but you prefer the higher resolution, you have that option there. But for me, I'm going to select 30 because I'm not going to be streaming any games and I'm just showing you guys how to set this up. So now let's click next and we get to link our stream service. So currently we have Twitch selected and we can also select YouTube. We're going to go ahead and select YouTube and then go down to my browser. And I'm gonna show you guys how to get the stream key and server information for YouTube and for Twitch. So if you wanna check out Twitch, just go ahead and click on that timestamp and jump forward to that. So for YouTube, we're gonna click on the create button up here at the top, it kind of looks like a camera with a plus. And then we're gonna click on go live. After we've clicked on go live, we're going to go down to stream right now, click start, and then we're not going to use the built in webcam. We want to use the streaming software. So we'll go ahead and click on that, click go. And there's a few things that we need out of this setup. We need the stream key and we need the stream URL because YouTube uses what's called RTMP. So let's copy the stream key and go back to OBS and then we'll use the stream key and simply just paste in our stream key. And now that we've done that, we can click on show if we wanted to. I don't want to show you guys my stream key because then you can stream to my YouTube channel. I don't want that. Um, and then after you're done with that, you just simply click next. And it's going to start testing these settings that you've currently selected and see what is the best for you as far as frame rate, resolution, and your internet speed and how much you can handle and your bit rate. So our YouTube test is ended and it, essentially gave us a bit rate of 10,000, which is going to be 10 megs a second, and also decided our video encoder and our recording encoder for us, which is a great thing, because if you don't understand anything about that, that could be really confusing of deciding through the list of what to choose. It also decided that we could record with a high quality and medium file size, which is nice, and we can even do this all at 1080p, which is awesome. So in this case, we would just click apply settings, and we'd be ready to go to jump to the later part of the video of where we're going to start configuring and adding in our scenes and our stuff to our scenes. But right now we're going to go ahead and jump back because now I'm going to show you how to do it for Twitch. 
So if you want to do it for Twitch, the process is pretty much the same. You just need to get your stream key. So let's go ahead and go to Twitch, click on our account and go to the creator dashboard. Once that loads, we're going to go ahead and go to the left side, click on settings and click stream under those settings. And then now we have our primary stream key. Just copy your stream key and then you should be able to bounce back over to OBS, paste that in, click next, run that test, and you should be good to go for Twitch as well. So let's go ahead and see what these settings come out to. So we've got our settings for Twitch now. The configuration wizard is recommending a 6,000 uh, bit rate, which is going to be six megabits per second. And the streaming encoder is going to be NVENC. And like I said, a second ago with the YouTube, this is amazing because it's gonna let you know exactly what encoder you need to use if you have no idea. It also gives us the options for recording if we wanted to use these same settings for recording that we can record in high quality with a medium file size at 1080p 30 frames per second. And that's nice to know. And if this is something that you want to do once you've ran this wizard, all you need to do is click apply settings and these settings are ready for you. Now, if you plan on just recording, we're going to go ahead and cover those settings now. And if these settings are good for you because you plan on streaming and recording, then go ahead and check out our timestamps down below to jump past just the recording section so you can go ahead and figure out how to set up your scenes for your live stream. So now for those of you that just want to record, let's go ahead and cover just the recording settings. So to do so, we're going to go ahead and click on tools and then go to the auto configuration wizard. And we're going to click optimize just for recording. I will not be streaming. This is going to make sure that your settings are more fine tuned for just recording for those of you that do not plan on streaming. So now let's go ahead and click next. And this works kind of the same way as the live stream. Go ahead and select the base canvas resolution. That's going to be what your monitor is or what you plan on recording as if you don't want to mess with the downscale filter. So for those of you that are just getting started with OBS, set this to what you want to record at. So I'm going to select 1920 by 1080 because that's what I would prefer. And your frame rate is going to be determined on how much movement pretty much you have on screen. So if you're playing a game and you've got a lot of movement on screen, I would suggest trying to go for 60. So you could select just 60 or you could use either of these options that prioritize frame rate over resolution or resolution over frame rate. So kind of pick those based off of your preference. But for me, I'm going to go with 30 because I'm not going to be doing any of that. So now I'm going to click next. And it already says that the program has determined that these estimated settings are ideal for you with the recording encoder being in VINC and then the recording quality being high quality with a medium file size at 1080p with 30 frames per second. So that's all we have to do to get that set up. And now we can just click apply settings. All right. So now that we've covered all the back end settings that we pretty much needed to, we've got one more that we need to add, and that is our audio as far as our microphone or our desktops audio that we may or may not want to capture. So I want to go ahead and cover that because that is very important and it actually doesn't cover that in the configuration wizard. And I feel like it should, but it, I guess it's just trying to get the video settings right for you. So let's go ahead and go down to the bottom right hand corner where our controls are and click on settings. And then we're going to go to audio. And this is going to give us the ability to set microphones and desktop audio devices. So the desktop audio is going to be pretty much your computer's audio. What you would be hearing through your headphones is the best way I can describe it. And you would go down through here and select whatever device that you used to listen to stuff on your computer that you may want to be captured through OBS. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this TV because let's just say that's what I use. And for the microphone, we'll go ahead and select this first microphone and I'll set it to my audio interface because this is what my microphone is plugged into. Now, after I've clicked on both of those and selected them and click apply and OK, we can see that in our audio mixer down here at the bottom, we now have two audio devices, one of those being my microphone and the other one being a desktop audio device. The last thing I do want to cover in this part of the video is I do want to mention that sometimes if you have more advanced audio equipment, you might run into this problem of where you see one line bouncing up and down and the other one not. So there are two lines here and you can see that this bottom one is just a grayed over color and you can't really see any movement like you can on the top here when I'm talking. So to fix that, you'd click on the settings gear and you'd go to advanced audio properties. And all you need to do on that microphone, if it's doing it, it's because it's a single channel mic. Just go ahead and select that to mono. And then now we can see both channels are jumping together, which means our microphone is properly configured. 
And a good rule of thumb for both your audio for your desktop and your microphone is to make sure that you're not really clipping into this red section often. You wanna be kind of around the yellow. So go ahead and adjust that gain or make sure your microphone's turned up a little bit more where you hit that sweet spot in the audio. So now that we've covered pretty much all of the backend settings, that being the video settings and now the audio, let's talk about how to get some picture or something on the screen other than just a blank canvas that's just black. So to get started, let's talk about scenes and sources. Your scenes are going to be the equivalent of like web pages on the internet. That's the best way I can describe it. You could have a main page and a second page and a third page and a fourth page. This is essentially the way that you can have different views for your viewers, for your recorded content or for your live stream. And this is really, really handy and you're probably gonna like it a lot. And the sources is the content or the assets inside of those scenes. So let's go ahead and right click inside of the sources section and go to add. And let's go ahead and add in a source. Now we're not gonna cover every single source in this video because this video would be a lot longer than what we plan on it or want it to be. And it might not be as useful for some of you that just wanna go ahead and get started with this. So we're not gonna cover everything, but if you wanna see a video on that, check out our video up above, <clears throat> up above because we actually cover pretty much everything in this program in that video. And it's great for beginners because we talk through pretty much everything. So we're gonna mess with a few things, the standard stuff that most people would want. The first one being a display capture. So click that and we can give that a name. I'm gonna give mine a name of right monitor because that's what I wanna to try to capture with it. And we'll make source visible and then click okay. And currently it's set on my main monitor right here, the middle monitor, and you can see that it's kind of doing this cascading thing of where it's just like this infinite loop. So let's go ahead and change that. And I'm gonna select my right monitor and we can now see in our preview that my right monitor is now showing up in the preview. So this is great. So this scene right here is just the right monitor. If we also had a webcam, we could go to add and we could go down to video capture device and click OK. And then we can actually select our webcam as well. So I've got my webcam selected and you're probably seeing an inception version of me right now. And that's OK, I guess. But I'm going to go ahead and make a new scene so you don't have to look at me the whole time. And we'll go ahead and add just a display capture in. And here's the really cool part about this. Since we already have a display capture, we can click Add Existing and add a right monitor in. And we've got a right monitor added in and we can bounce back and forth between scene one, which has my camera attached and scene two, which does not have my camera attached. And that is pretty much how scenes work. They are very easy to use and adding sources to them can be very basic. We can add things like video with a media source and even graphics with the image. And if you're playing video games and game capture is also a great source because it's gonna make sure that your hardware for your computer is more adequately being used to capture that gameplay. So all right, guys, that's gonna be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead, destroy that like button, get subscribed and turn on notifications for future videos from How To Tech. This has been Chad from How To Tech helping you take your tech to the next level and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. If you wanna check out some of our other videos, you can do so right over there. And if you wanna be like these lovely people down below, then think about becoming a YouTube member today. Members get early access to videos, discounts on merch, custom emotes, badges, community only posts, and much, much more. Big thanks to all of our community members for helping further support How To Tech.